So Tennessee comes in tomorrow morning. Um, and defensively, they're really good. Um, they're one of the best defensive teams uh, in our league. Um, they lead the league in scoring defense. Teams only score 62 against them. They're sixth in the country in block shots at six per game. They lead our league in block shots. They're really long. They're really bouncy. Only six teams have scored more than 70 against them. Um, I lead off with that, saying that, um, you know, we managed to score 55 points against the Georgia team that's not one of the best defensive teams in the league, and we scored 55. Um, now, we did a great job, I thought, defensively with Georgia. I give our guys a lot of credit. Uh, holding Georgia down to 65 was, was really good because Georgia can really score. But the fact that we struggled so much offensively against a good defensive team in Georgia versus a great defensive team against Tennessee, you know, causes me some concern offensively about, uh, you know, what we're going to be able to do. Um, you know, Tennessee is, uh, um, they'll put six or seven really quality guys out there on the floor. Their challenge is just depth. They just don't have a ton of depth. Um, the matchup between Fulkerson and our five men is going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, Fulkerson is one of the most improved players in our league. He certainly is one of the top two or three most improved players in our league. And there's not, there's not, no, I mean, it's, he's really, really, really impressive. Um, he is the most efficient offensive post player in our league. More efficient than Nick Richards and Austin Wiley, who are both very efficient. When he touches it, they are scoring like 1.6, 1.7 points per possession. He scores it. Um, and so guarding him will be a challenge. He's really quick. He's left-handed. He's unorthodox. They're going to try to get Austin Wiley in foul trouble early in the game, going to him. Um, he faces it. He can rip it and take it down to the basket. So we're going to have to do an effective job guarding him. Uh, the score with the point guard is uh, really you know, his arrival at the same time Turner went out is, was, was absolutely crucial for Tennessee to be able to, um, you know, maintain their competitive play in the league. Um, and so he's a dynamic point guard. Bowden is a great scorer. Uh, Jones, you know, Josiah Jones was a McDonald's All-American. Um, you know, probably, a, you know, one of those kids that got in that Isaac Okoro didn't get in. You know, I go, if I look back at those teams and I go, you know, he's a really good player. Um, but there were a handful of guys in that game that were in that game that Isaac wasn't in that game. So you get a, you'll get a look at what the you know, you know guys that, that beat Isaac out. We all know how good Isaac is. Um, Isaac um, did practice with us yesterday. Uh, he, he did not go 100%, um, but he did move around. He'll go with us again today. Um, and his status for Saturday is, is uh, just sort of still pending. You know, I'm not... Uh, but at least he did get he did practice he did practice again today. But again, we're approaching it uh, with a, with an abundance of caution. Simply, if you're in a practice situation and you're able to be in control of your movements, um, then um, uh, that's a, that's a real positive thing for his rehabilitation. When you get into a game and you're just reacting to things, that's when things like a pulled muscle, you know. You just can't quite ever duplicate that in practice. So we'll see how he does. How much do you think you've missed a core these last two games? To, you know, the thing about commenting too much on how we've missed them, there's just, is uh, it, no matter how you phrase it, it sounds like you're making excuses. So I don't even want to talk about it. Um, Isaac is incredibly valuable to us, of the, both the offensive and defensive end. His man never scores. So put him on whoever you're going to put him on at Georgia or at Missouri or against Tennessee. That guy's not scoring. He's our best help defender, taking charges, getting vertical, you know, ending possessions with, with rebounds or things like that. And then offens offensively, he's a really tough cover and another breakdown guy that can get to the rim. And so we miss him a lot. Your three-point shooting has struggled lately. Do you still give everybody the green light, or do you try to make some adjustments there? No, I think, I think as long as we're getting good shots. I thought that uh, I thought at Georgia we got good shots. Uh, we had a couple, a couple of tough looks, but you always had every game. I mean, I, if, if we make 
25% of our open looks, we win. You know, we didn't, we, we weren't able to do that. So we just gotta, you know, continue to get those shots and, and to have confidence to, to make them. I always, I tell our guys, look, um, uh, the best way to be confident in your shot is to prepare. That's one of the greatest ways you can have confidence in yourself is feel like you're prepared. Our guys have worked really hard. They should shoot the ball thinking it's going in because they're prepared. If they weren't in the gym, if they weren't coming and getting shots, if they weren't doing all the things they were supposed to do, uh, you know, you're not ready for that test. You know, you're not ready for that exam. Our guys have worked hard. They should be confident. Samir kind of said that he feels like Jalen Williams is ready right now, that he's ready to contribute a lot right now. What did you see out of him against Georgia? And what do you see his role being right now? You know, my job is to put the players in positions to be successful and put them out there to be successful. And so one of the reasons why we've held Jalen back is because he's playing behind seniors, Daniel Purifoy, Anthony McLemore. Uh, Isaac Carr was playing some of the time at his position. And, um, and so there were some things in Jalen's game that, you know, um, that he needed to, to work on. But you could see in practice and you could see in some of the games and you certainly saw at Georgia, he's a lot closer to being effective right now than he was a few months ago. Um, he's got great size, he's got great length. Um, he had a couple of big blocks, he had six big rebounds. Um, uh, you know, he even late in the game, uh, when we ran a, a drag screen and Samir got double, we threw it back to him. He, doesn't, he didn't hesitate, that's the shot he should take. Um, so. I think you can see what the future looks like for Jalen. Now, how much he can impact our team this season, I think a lot's going to depend on Anthony and Dangel and Al and some of those other guys that have been playing ahead of Jalen. Um, if, 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 if they struggle, then I can still, I still see Jalen, you know, I think Jalen will get a rotation. Um, but I don't know how dominant yet he's going to be. But I think it's, it's wonderful to see progress that he's made. How much did he and the other freshmen gain from experiencing two more tough road games? Say it again. <laughs> How much, it's me, I can't hear. No, I have a quiet voice. No, it's How me. much do you think um, he and the other freshmen gain from experiencing two more rough, uh, tough road games? Um, I look, any experience that freshmen can get uh, is extremely valuable if you can if you can learn you know learn from those experiences, and you know some of the things that get exposed um, in those games are definitely uh huh learning moments for them. Now the question is, can you do it? Can you what can you do about it? All right, I get it. I, I see where I broke down. I see where I wasn't able to get that done. Can I make the adjustment? So yeah, there's nothing like that experience for those guys. Another early tip time. You got you enforcing the curfew tonight, and you got your breakfast menu. Yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the deal. We got a baseball game to get to. Softball, right? Softball in town? They're, they're no, California. They're out of town, but they're in, they're in California. When it's cold, that's not a bad idea. But baseball's here. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact Central Florida comes up in Orlando where it's 85 degrees, and they're gonna come up and play. I think it's great. I mean, baseball looks so excited. But I'm looking forward to getting out there myself. But yeah, we need our students to get over there and check that out, and uh, and then get in our, get get a curfew, and I'll see them. I understand it's Jack's biscuits tomorrow. That's what I understand. I don't know if it's a rumor. But that's the real deal. And uh, so uh, I'll be out there uh, pre-game after we get done our after we get done with our pre-game stuff. We'll go out there and get them some breakfast and get some food in their bellies and get that jungle rocking. Backing off that, with the success you guys have had at home, is it your goal now to finish the season undefeated at Auburn Arena? Um, no, uh, good question, but I, I really that does, it doesn't end, come into play very much. Our goal, we have five games left. You know, how many of them can we get? Which one can we get? Which two? Which three? Which one? I mean, what can we get here? Um, and so, how can we how, how can we try to be playing our best basketball at the end? I think we've got seven. Or eight wins away from Auburn Arena. Eight. Got eight wins away from Auburn Arena. So there are, I'd say, probably 25, 30 teams in the country, maybe, that have seven or eight wins. 
away from their home arena. Um, so we've been able to win away from home, but clearly we've played better at home. Um, but our, the jungle's not going to put the ball in the basket for us. We've got to do it ourselves. Are we good?